Hey guys, it's Kyle Bennett with HardOCP.com. And this is what we just got in this morning about lunchtime. There's one. There's two. Let me show you what we got here to test. We have Ryzen 5 1600 and a Ryzen 5 1600. We bought these online. We'll have those linked for you. And uh, what we're going to do here today is we're going to do an unboxing. And then later on this week, we're going to return back to you with some overclock numbers in it. But also, since we bought those and we don't need to rely on AMD samples, what we have right there is a big box from AMD. And that is our Ryzen 5 reviewer sample kit. And uh, what we're going to do, since we bought our own, uh, Ryzen 5 CPUs. What we're going to do is give away this kit next week unopened and we'll talk a bit about that a little, uh, little bit later on. So we're back on the test bench with the two AMD Ryzen 5 1600 CPUs that we got in this morning. Um, 3.2 gigahertz base, 3.6 uh, precision boost and uh, later this week we are definitely going to be putting these uh, on the test bench and seeing what we can overclock these two. So we'll definitely have data on that this week. Uh, for right now, we just wanted to kind of take a closer look at what was in the box and uh, show you exactly what to expect and how to install the cooler here. It's not going to be much different than what we saw last time, but I know there's a lot of you that are probably coming into the AMD fold that are not familiar with this at all. So I'll give you a little bit better, uh, a little bit better instruction than I did last time. This is a Ryzen 5 CPU. This is the first one we've seen. It's a Ryzen 5 1600. This one is made in China. Not that we saw any difference on that last time, but that's kind of worth noting. So what's going to be different this than what we showed in our last review was this uh, is the Wraith cooler, but this one is actually a tad bit different. Get out of here. So, so initially looking at this, it looks uh, exactly the same, surely. Um, the only difference here is that we don't have the LED ring on this one. So you'll notice that you don't have a plug down here, or I think it was over here on the last one, and you've only got one cord. So that's, that's the big difference, okay? So no big difference there. This, this cooler is still, uh, it's still uh, it's rated at uh, 95 watts as the other one was. And so let's show you how to install it real quick and we'll cover that better than we did last time because we left out a couple of steps. All right, so the board I have in front of me right here is the uh, Asus uh, Crosshair 6 Hero. And if you took it out of the package, this is exactly how it looked. Okay, last time we didn't show you this. And like I said, I know a bunch of you guys are probably new to this. So a lot of the, a lot of the coolers on the market will use these tabs here on these mounting brackets that come stock on this board. And our cooler does not use those, right? So let me show you how this works. And you want to use a Phillips head screwdriver and simply remove the two screws either side. When you're doing this, be careful not to drop the screws on the motherboard anytime. And, and God forbid, don't do this with the board plugged in either. That's not smart at all. So you see, once you get those two screws out, that bracket comes right off there. Not any problem at all. On most of these boards, you will find that the plate behind these boards is actually glued on this is what the plate will look like, the back plate. This one doesn't have any adhesive on it, but most of these probably will have, adhe have adhesive on them. And so I'll show you why that's somewhat important because it makes these easier to mount. So we got the screws off that one, lift it right up, it's out of the way. So if these do have adhesive on them, you'll notice that these don't move, right? Because that back plate, that hold down plate, is adhered to the back of the board. So that makes these much easier to um, install, makes it cooler, much easier to install. Last time I showed you one that was not done that way because we'd already ripped it apart to do water cooling on it. So next thing you wanna do, when you insert your cooler or you insert your processor, before your cooler obviously, 
You always want to make sure you've grounded yourself off to something metal in the environment that's preferably plugged in the wall, like a power supply or something. Take your processor out. You will notice that your processor has a little gold mark over in one corner. Okay, so that will line up with a little arrow. Let me show you right here. So you will see an arrow there at one corner of your socket. And so that's where the arrow goes. So when you put this in, you know, line it easily, get it straight, and let it fall into the socket. For God's sakes, don't, don't push on it. Now once, now once you're down into the socket like this, I highly suggest this, so you know it's in the socket, right? Go ahead and push down with two or three fingers and you can push down as hard as you want pretty much as long as you're on a good surface you're not going to tear up your board then go ahead and lock down your cpu arm that way you know that that processor is flat down in the socket and you're going to get a good contact with all the pins okay so next thing is go back the uh on the stock cooler we already have uh you already have the tim on there See, it comes off really easily, so you can make a mess at this point really easily. What you want to do is kind of get down, make sure you line up where your posts are going to be, and set it, make sure you get all that lined up. This is so much easier to do outside of the case. I highly suggest doing this outside of the case. Okay, so we're going to come back. Let me bring you out here and you can see a little bit better. So we're going to come over here. You can turn the screws backward while pushing down. And so you heard that, right? It's a lotion. So let's do that again. So I'm going to turn the screw backward while pushing down. And you're going to hear the clunk from the thread catching. Here it comes. Okay, there it is. So now I know I can go forward. My threads are lined up. So I grab about a thread over there. Then I go diagonal to the other side of the board. I'm going to do it again. There's my thread. Now I can move forward to turn. There's the thread. Now I go forward. Let's do it over here. There's the thread. Now I go forward. Okay. Now what that does is that keeps you from cross threading any of those threads. Um, and it makes sure you also can get an even count. I'm going around, so we go across, I go one, two, three. I'm gonna go across, one, two, three. I'm gonna go across, one, two, three. Across, one, two, three. Okay, so you get the idea there. And I'm gonna go down until all these are flush. Okay, that one's flush. That one's tight. Now once you feel that thread bottom out, you do not need to crank on this. You're not needing to tighten that on there in any way, shape, or form. Okay? So now our cooler is in there. That thing's not going anywhere. That is the way it should be mounted. Now, if you're wondering how good a mate we get, let's actually take this back apart and look at it. And when you take it apart, I'd suggest you kind of do the same. If you're checking your mating surface, I would suggest you do it the same Now we hadn't had any heat put to this, so the mate's going to look a little bit different than, and say, if you had to run it under load for a while. I'm going to pull this straight up. And let's take a look down on the board. So we got a pretty good mate there. We pushed out a lot of the extra thermal paste. You can see right here around the edges. There's a lot of paste there, excess paste on the edges that got pushed out. That number one tells us we got a good seat under there. Let's get that off there. And you can see we were down really, really thin in here as well. So let's look 
and what the cooler looks like. So first off, you're going to notice almost immediately that the, uh, the copper slug there almost looks naked that we pushed so much of the paste out. So, I mean, we got a tremendous amount of paste there on that corner, tremendous amount here. So our mating on these is extremely good. Now, obviously, if you take yours off and check it, then you need to reapply that Tim. Do not put it back on without reapplying the thermal interface material. Um, so that's it. That is the Ryzen 5 1600 unboxing. Showed you how to install the cooler properly right out of the box. And uh, one thing we talked about at the beginning of the video is, hey, so AMD Ryzen reviewer sample giveaway. Since we bought all of our samples we're going to be using, we'll be using those with Corsair Vengeance uh, RAM as well. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to give away that whole box. Inside the box is one Ryzen 5 1600X CPU, one Ryzen 5 1500X CPU, one MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard, one AMD Wraith Max CPU cooler, and one AMD Wraith Spire CPU cooler. That's both the, uh, the Wraith Spire is what you just saw here. That is the 95 watt version. The Max is the 65 watt version. And also in that kit is a Guile memory kit, 16 gigabits, or 16 gigabytes of DDR4 rated at 3200 megahertz. So get back to you on later this week how we'll do that through the forums. And uh, thanks for watching.